Where were you? You missed out. I just had a wonderful time, you know, a whole, oh, I don't know, it must have been at least 10 minutes of sharing and learning from Tozer and having God speak to me and speak to you and talk about what he would have for us. And once I got done, it all got wiped out. So where were you? I got it. I guess we'll have to do it again so you get it. <laughs> going to bring about a good lesson a good learning process guess what you don't get it the first time he brings you all the way around to bring back to the second set of circumstances that are exactly like the first so that you get it no it wasn't your fault it was the lord telling me a lot i needed to hear and so when i shared it it was fun to divulge it and to allow it to come out and go forth and be accomplished in me as he chooses to in his timing because i'm sure it's going to go full circle, and I'm going to come right back to the same spot of where I fell down. So, praise the Lord, we're doing streams in the desert. <laughs> and we're doing oops, which is fun, because every time there's a oops, that's not really as much oopsie as it is just God knocking me or you or anyone else out of their little podium or comfort zone so that he could possibly accomplish something that he wants to do as opposed to what we want to do and that's what's been like my day today is that I had planned out so much that I was going to accomplish when a lot of what he said in devotions and emotions has been rest and recognition and realization that sometimes it's not my timing, but his. What time is it? I don't know. <laughs> I only know it's warm today. But in Streams in the Desert, my expectation is from him. Psalm 62.5 Our too general neglect of looking for answers to what we ask shows how little we are in earnest in our petitions. A husbandman is not content without the harvest. A marksman will observe whether the ball hits the target. A physician watches the effect of the medicine which he gives. And shall the Christian be careless about the effects of his labor? Every prayer of the Christian made in faith according to the will of God, for which God has promised, offered up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and under the influence of the Holy Spirit, whether for temporal or spiritual blessings, is or will be fully answered. Think about that one. There's some conditions in there if you think about it as we're reading it again, and I'll say it a little bit slower. Every, all of them, prayer of the Christian, made in faith, one, two, according to the will of God, that's two, <laughs> for which God has promised, that's three, offered up in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, that's four, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, that's five, whether for temporal or spiritual blessings, is or will be answered. I have always felt that all my prayers are answered, but then I don't always pray just flippantly either. I kind of hesitate, you know, when people ask me to pray, I kind of, Lord, what do you want me to pray and do you want me to? But I do believe that they're all answered. God always answers the general design and intention of his people's prayers in doing that which all things considered is most for his own glory and their spiritual and eternal welfare. As we never find that Jesus Christ rejected a single supplicant who came to him for mercy, so we believe that no prayer made in his name will be in vain. The answer to prayer may be approaching, though we discern not its coming. The seed that lies underground in winter is taking root in order to spring and harvest, though it appears not above ground, but seems dead and lost. Delayed answers to prayer are not only trials of faith, but they give us opportunities of honoring God by our steadfast confidence in Him under apparent repulses. That, I think, is possibly the spiritual sickness in maybe the body of Christ in the sense that we have gotten from what we call vain repetition to vain petition in that God heard you the first time, maybe, 
and you just keep bugging them. <laughs> Never thought of it that way, did you? Now, a lot of people like to quote the unrighteous judge and story that Jesus told about how the woman kept petitioning the judge night and day, crying out and begging for her cause. And the judge, after a long period of time, finally gave in to her just to basically, to put it in our words, shut her up. And I think that people have taken that one and run with it more than they've taken the point of sometimes when you pray, take it to the prayer, take it to God in prayer and leave it there. If you really have faith that God answers all your prayers, then you know according to his will, he will answer. According to his timing, he will show you and reveal it. According to what he has already said, he will do. And so people, my wife, I should say, maybe not all people, but some people have said that, you know, when I pray out loud, I hate to pray out loud because Jesus said don't. But when I pray out loud, they say, oh, well, that's such an eloquent prayer, and that's so this and there and whatever. But, you know, nine times out of ten, I'm just sharing what I'm thinking in my head and my heart about how what I'm asking God to do, I can see his will in so that I could pray and not waste my time with him. Because I'd rather talk to him about something else than to be praying, you know, and just kind of like petitioning all these weird things. I'd rather just sit down and talk to God over a cup of coffee, you know, like in devotionals, and find out what he wants for me, not keep telling him what I want from him. You know, I, I enjoy listening to the Lord and having his Holy Spirit apply it to my life. And there comes a time when you will hear his voice. You will hear audibly in a very real hearing, not something you imagined, Jesus speak. And I can say this, when you do, you don't have anything to say. He will speak to you because he, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. And we use that to apply to reading the word and, you know, the circumstances fit and you feel a open door or you feel this or you feel that or it seems to be or you kind of go and you think it's a whisper and it might be a whisper and it could be and maybe it is and maybe it isn't and then you go by faith that it is and so God confirms it and whatever. But there's also another time that Jesus said is, hey, you know, I'm the good shepherd. And I can tell you that a good shepherd doesn't sit there and talk quietly to his sheep. He shares with them, he cares with them, he sings to them. He spends time with them. They know his voice. And that's the same thing that's true with you. If you're content with where you're at with God, to just sit there and read a Bible and say God spoke to you, which is good. If you're content to be there and to just hear a pastor speak and re recognize that God is speaking through the pastor to you, that's good. If you're content to have a worship service and they give a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom and you know it's for you and you identify it and apply it to your life and by way of the Holy Spirit inside you connects you with that and you become proportionate to it, then praise the Lord. If that's what you enjoy, good. Same too, same too with all the prophetic and all the prophecies and all the other things and even people coming up with a word for you and all that good stuff. Good. I'm happy for you. But I can tell you this. When Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, he wasn't talking about any of those. He was blunt and to the point. He meant what he said. He said what he meant. If you satisfied yourself with being anything less than that, can I make a suggestion? <laughs> it's an awesome thing to fall in the hands of a living God. But it's a marvelous thing to hear Jesus speak. Do not settle for less. Pursue God with all your heart, with all your soul, with the agony of your spirit, with wanting and desiring to hear him in such a way, not that you deceive yourselves into believing he does, but that because of the love you have for him, he meets you when he wants to and blows your mind. <laughs> And when he does, they'll call you a Jesus freak. And maybe, just maybe, like Enoch, 
He might just say, come away with me, my love, to a place beyond all reasoning. Let's leave this world behind, and let's walk away. That day is coming. I pray you learn to hear Jesus speak.